All right, so let's have a look here at the right circular cone a little bit more. You'll note that for the right circular cone here, we're going to have the fact that the apex is directly above the center of the base means that much like with the regular pyramid here, there's going to be a consistent slant height. We're going to call that L, and it goes all the way around here. So this L actually works everywhere else. And you'll see that we have our altitude in blue, our H here, and the radius of the circular base R. So this actually leads us to something very important here because we've got a right triangle here. right? ABC is a right triangle with this, and through Pythagorean theorem, we can actually determine here that h squared plus r squared is equal to l squared. So that's going to be an important thing here. We'll talk about that later. All right. Now, uh, we'd like to determine a couple things about this thing, for in particular the surface area. Uh, well, the surface area, well, let's see. It's going to be the area of the circular base, and that's easy. That's pi r squared. But it's also going to be, we're going to have to add the area of the lateral surface. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the lateral surface is going to look like here. So I'd like you to take a minute, and I'd like you to pause the video for a bit, and I'd like you to consider, if we were to unwrap the cone, unroll the cone here, what do you think this lateral surface is going to look like here? Okay, Take a minute and figure it out here. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to see what it looks like here, see if we can come up with any clues. Now, again, we know that this point A, this apex here, is L units away from B. And note that this point B is nowhere special. It's just on the circle itself. It could be anywhere along this, which means that as it sweeps around here, every point on the circumference here, every point on the circumference of the circle is L units away from A. Now, that sounds a lot like a definition of part of a circle here. So, indeed, that's going to be our biggest hint. And that tells us here that if we were to unwrap this, and you can try this on your own, if we were to unwrap this, we would end up with something that looks like this, some portion of a circle here, okay? So we'll call this here, you can see that A transfers over here very quick, easily. It, you see that B is gonna be over here, and B is also gonna be over here as well, because we're gonna unwrap this cone from the bottom here, and point D is somewhere along this here, so that's gonna be, the, it's gonna go along for the ride. Now, I drew this as a quarter of a circle. It doesn't have necessarily have to be a quarter of a circle. There's gonna be some angle up here, some central angle up here, theta. We don't know what it is, right? So you could have, for instance, if theta is a relatively small angle, I think you can visualize it here, that you're going to have a very tall, skinny cone with a very small base. Whereas if theta is particularly large, you're going to have a very flat cone with a very large, uh, you know, very flat shield-like cone here. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to figure out what's going on here. How can we determine what's happening with this here? Well, we know that this is a sector. So the area of the sector is going to be theta over 360 times pi times the radius squared. Okay, well, nice part is we can transfer things over. A, B transfers over here. We know that this circle has radius L. That's going to be helpful, so we can stick L here. Now, of course, we don't know what theta is. And again, theta can change, so we have to be kind of careful. So we need to find another piece of information. Note that BDB here, this arc down here, it came from this circle, right? Because I unwrapped the cone around this here. So this arc BDB is actually this circular base down here. So as a result for that here, we know that this here is going to have a length equal to some circumference of the circle, and that's 2 pi r, which means that 2 pi r here is going to be this length. Note it's not a measure, it is a length. So that's actually really helpful here, because now we can use that to figure out theta. So we can use our arc length formula, right? If you remember, that's going to be theta over 360 times pi, 2 pi times the radius. Okay, well, let's see. We have theta over 360 times 2 pi. The radius of this circle here, the radius of this big circle is L. So remember, when I say radius, I'm looking at the radius. Since this is an arc, a length B, D, B of the entire, of this big circle here, so this is going to be 2 pi L here. And the length we know is 2 pi R from what we had over here. So this is going to be 2 pi R. So now I have this equation here that 2 pi r is equal to 2, 3 over 360 times 2 pi l. Now technically I don't know what theta is, but since theta over 360 shows up in the area here, I don't have to solve for theta. I just have to solve for theta over 360. And another thing to another nice thing to note here is that 2 pi's, these just cancel out because you divide by 2 pi here. And then you get that theta over 360 is just r over l, right? Because we just divide both sides by l. And now this is quite nice because now we can take this and put it back in here. So now we can find the area of the sector. So the area of the sector is theta over 360, which we have just shown as r over l. So let me substitute that in, r over l times pi times the radius of the circle. The radius of the circle is l squared. And you'll note that the l cancels with an l squared over here, leaving a single l behind, which actually leaves us with a very elegant looking formula. Only three things in it, 
pi r l. So what we have here is that the lateral area of any cone is always pi times the radius times the slant height here. So we can say that the lateral area is going to be pi r l. A very elegant looking formula here. Now that we have the lateral area, the, sur the surface area is actually very easy to calculate because all we had to do is just add the center at the uh, circular base here. So the surface area here is in this case is going to be again our lateral area pi r l, but we're going to add it's another thing here, and that's going to be the circle pi r squared. And the volume now the volume is going to function the same way as again we can use our analogy we're here with the uh, with the cone. You know you can think of you know we saw before that cylinders were essentially just like non polygonal uh, non polygonal prisms. So we can use an analogy here. We can think that a you know a cylinder is to a prism as a cone is to a pyramid so we can use the same thing one third area base times height so it's one third the area of the base well these spaces are circles which is pi r squared and the height is going to be h so we have these three here for the right circular cone